like I said, it's not out of character for a German shepherd to bark at people he doesn't know in the house that he's supposed to be protecting with the people he loves. Oh, hello there, and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's canine educator. Thank you so much for joining me here today. This is episode number two of a reactive German Shepherd we just wrapped up in Miami, Florida with. And if you haven't seen episode number one, you can click the link above to watch that now. But moving forward, we're really excited to show you the progression of this dog in a very short time. This dog is reactive to people coming into the house. This dog is also reactive to any dog that he sees outside of the house. So in this episode, you really see us start really honing in on the exact triggers and issues that make this dog reactive. So, yeah, exactly what I thought. Coming in is if, is if, if I come back and the behavior drastically changes, which it did. Hi, buddy. Hello. Then we know that we have to work with, with uh, you guys primarily. As you can see, the most important for me is for you to understand why it's happening. F fixing the behavior or giving the leash to somebody who works with dogs isn't going to be always something that you can do. So I want to make sure you really clearly know why he's doing this. So do you have any questions on that? Okay. So um, you, you see the difference, yes. right? Okay, cool. Because as soon as we were outside and he was like, yeah, I don't care about anything. Like, fine. And as soon as we came in, boom over. <clears throat> so the flame and the, the gasoline are meeting with somebody here with him. Okay. So, and it could be a collaboration of the house, the people he loves. He's like I said, it's not out of character for a German shepherd to bark at people he doesn't know in the house that he's supposed to be protecting with the people he loves. <laughs> right. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same thing. It's a, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a very territorial thing. But for him, it's not, it's not as much as a... So what I, what I would accept in most cases like this is warning. I'm okay with it. It's what we get dogs. Warning of like, hey, somebody's here. Go lay down. Done. Fooey. Lay down. Done. Got it. Disengagement. But what you're getting here is constant. Mm -hmm. And it's not based out of... Um, alert barking, it's based out of fear and it's causing him to not only be stressed, but it's causing you to be stressed as well, which is hurting your relationship with the dog. Because exactly. then when people come over, you're like, well, what, 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 what do we do? Do we avoid and put the dog away or do we tell people not to come over or do we just try it and then it's stressful when somebody's here? I'd like you to be able to just know everything on how to address the situations. So, um, place command, um, do you ever do that inside? Yeah. Because usually he'll be out and then you'll put him outside on the mm -hmm. command. Mm -hmm. um, but inside, to be honest, we kind of like, we're good at it and then now we're not. We're more okay, so you're just not consistent anymore. Right. Okay, that's fine. Um, so what, what I would be doing, again, like I talked about outside, is counter conditioning. So the, the majority of the reaction is coming from fear. Hi, buddy. Hello. The fear is coming from lack of confidence of you guys, I'm point of view from the dog, you guys don't know what to do when somebody comes over, so he takes control, okay? okay? It's like a, a really good manager in a situation where the customer's really upset. <laughs> a good manager's gonna say, oh, I'm so sorry, what, what's going on, right? That's what he's doing in a fear-based reaction. So what you guys need to do is not only send him away to be more successful, but you also need, you taking control of the scenario and the situation will make him go, wait, you know what you're doing? And you're gonna go, yeah, we do actually, and stop barking. Okay. <laughs> so does that make sense? Yeah. So the core, the barking is coming from lack of confidence, okay. but the barking is also just an annoyance. So you need to, you're hitting it head on on both, both ways. Okay. So if you send him away and isolate him, it's good because the dog is going away, but it's better because you're handling the situation, which is actually what's making him react in the first place. Okay. You can just go grab his leash. Yeah, the, so I want you to just hang on to him because right now the leash is going to be your good dog, bad dog, okay? So you just let him hang out and as I move around a little bit, if he negatively reacts, you do your 
disengagement command, and then you're going to say it. Okay. If he doesn't, then you're going to correct him. Okay. So import, the, the important thing to that is, is you're not going to correct him and say it at the same time. Ask him first okay. before you do it. Does that make sense? Yeah. He's going to be protective over you at all costs. I want you to practice more of this. More of like, uh, like we're having a conversation. Come a little, f yeah, there. Like, yep, okay. even like that. Okay. The crazy guy with the stick, yeah, let him out. <laughs> but if it's just somebody you're talking to or if it's somebody that's coming in, your, your language with the dog is all gonna be body and leash. Okay. So when we do like police dog training and protective training, we'll put the dog in front of us to say, yeah, that's the guy, okay. right? And you don't wanna represent that at all. Okay, you want to make sure that when I like when I walk up to you, I want to make sure like who's like if, if we were to have a conversation and he was a human, I want to make sure that I'm talking to the person in charge. Okay, just just come out here and spin him around really quick. Good. And then let's. Um... Good. So just tell just do your disengagement command. Okay. So fooey or off. And then so you're going to tell him that. Do the best you can. So in these situations, I know it can kind of be a little bit stressful. Just try to think really clear and be really calm because he's, he's just yelling at me. Okay. He's, he's, he's doing every, think about it like a rattlesnake. Okay. He's just rattling this thing right now. He's showing his teeth and he's barking. Good. And then just stop. So, so see how he's super afraid of me. Yeah. So it's all a fear-based thing. But he's also, there, we, gotta, we gotta be like not naive enough to say like, it's just fear, it's just insecurity. He could be just saying like, no mom, let's stay here because this guy's bad, because I don't know, who knows really? Because I bet if you just hand me the leash. Good. Hold on one second, I wanna, this is a good opportunity for you to work on this stuff. So straighten your, yep, good. And then you give him his fooey command when he, do, when he, when he does it, not yet. Um, so you, you take control of the situation as much as you possibly can. But it's, does it make sense? Like he's, I, I want you to be cautious of it, but I also want you to know what it is because it sounds like he's gonna maul me, but he's not. But I, I, that's not like he can't bite somebody because he is in a very fearful state of mind and I'm in his house working with his favorite person. Um, so hand me the leash again. Good. Now let go and then you just, you just walk that way. Let's see what he does. Bud. Come on. Let's go. Good. Good. I'm just gonna walk him around. Good. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's okay. Hi, Mr. Man. Hi, Mr. Man. Got him? <gasps> there he is. So, I, what we're doing is we're temperament testing. We're we're I, I, I'm learning and testing. The same everyone else is. The same the dog is, the same you guys are. So we're just figuring out, oh, this is it. Okay, and now that, and it's gonna constantly change. So I'm not, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen, why it's happening. Okay. We're working it out together. Um, but that was a really good test of when he's with you, he's, he's, he's like, he's fearful, but then when I get close, he's also, um, uh, he shows signs of aggression. And that's a, I think that's an instinctual thing for him to go, don't come any closer. You're making me uncomfortable. Completely fine. I'm okay with all of that. I don't want, want it to happen, but we're trying to figure out why it's happening. So just walk towards me again. <clears throat> Good. So see how he's avoiding me? So he's just afraid of me. Um, and that's pretty expected from him. I, I didn't think that he didn't like me f as a person. I just think he was afraid of me, and he is. So that's good. Um, did you have any questions on that? I said because you're trying to you know, boss him around? No, I don't think so because I'm not really, I'm not, I haven't ever asked him to do something that he doesn't know. I've just okay. like taken the leash and walked him around. I haven't ever really corrected him or anything. It's just because he doesn't know me. Okay. It's the same thing like if I were to, if, I, if you'd hand it to Adam, Adam, it'd be the, even though he's never interacted with Adam, it would be the same thing. It's just I'm taking it a step further to just walk him around and help him through the process. Is he fearful of me? Why? The main reason is you in the house. Because as soon as I walk out that door and off your property, he's completely fine with me. He's just like that with me. So remember that. He's, he's situationally fearful. 
which is good. Because if I were to bring him out there and he was bucking at the end of the leash running away from me, he would just be fearful of people he didn't know altogether. That's not the case. He's only fearful and protective and vulnerable in certain situations. As soon as I open the door, he starts barking like saying, hey, I'm here. I'm uh -huh. here. Yeah. Watch out. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and that's, and that's, relax, you know, yeah. And that's who he is. He's, and that's what I want to do is, is the goal isn't to, my goal anyway, isn't to stop like him barking and whatever at people. That's not, I don't, I don't even think you even want that to stop hundred percent. You just want to my, control it and understand it. Cause if you can do both of those things, then it's not going to be as frustrating and as potentially scary. The example I try to give people is, uh, if you have the most aggressive dog, but it has the best obedience, you're, you're likely to have more success than uh, a playful dog with no obedience as far as people getting hurt. Because you can say, like, again, the goal isn't to completely stop any of this, it's just to control it. So if somebody comes and knocks on the door and he goes, rawr, 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 you go, okay, thank you. F place, or t mark, down, platz, stay. Oh. That's it, and then the dog goes. Do you think he's aggressive? Sure, but so is football players. You know what I mean? Like, is it aggressive? Yeah, it's aggressive, but it, is it malicious? Is it mean? Does he actually want to hurt somebody? No, no, because if he wanted to do that, he would have done it six or seven times to Adam and I both t today. He ran up to us several times with his teeth out and just came up and goes, and just walked away. It takes a, an extreme amount of confidence for a dog to actually attack somebody. Bite somebody? I can see your fearful bite coming out of him like I talked about out here, <clears throat> meaning, if, if uh, your cousin Joe comes over, or friend, whatever, somebody comes over and they walk into the house with like groceries or whatever, hey, and he comes, rawr, 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 and he, he's not gonna come all the way up to him and bark, because he hasn't ever done that. It's bark, 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 yeah, right? And same thing here, we have it, we, we've seen it all. But, like I was saying before, is you're gonna have to manage your people to say, just ignore them, don't, don't look at them, don't talk to them, don't touch them, right? And then with your obedience that we're gonna work on, you can also go place, mark, plot, stay. But if you get somebody that doesn't know dogs well, and he's barking at him, it's a boom, and they're here, and he's, he's already biting off more than he can chew. So his adrenaline is going, he's fearfully barking. He can hardly breathe because he really doesn't wanna be doing this. That's the, that's the bark we talked about earlier, and he's right here, and then he's ready to back up, and somebody goes, hey buddy, I could see him nipping somebody, but I don't think he would ever full on just say, I'm gonna bite, I'm gonna attack you. Most dogs that are actually uh, meaningful about their aggression and they're like, I'm gonna bite you, don't make any noise. They just go. Good. So, stay. Good. Good. And the other thing that you're gonna find him more reactive to is when you have the leash. Because then again, that's that, there's no, there's no disconnect. You are completely attached to that. There's no way that he's not gonna protect you. Because you're, like right now, if I, if you were like, if I, if you were on the leash, he'd be reacting. Okay. But because he's this far away, you're not as connected. Yeah, so you gotta think, of, think about what we're doing. We're, yes, we're working on the, the stay and whatever, mm -hmm. but we're also temperament testing him. Because like when he's on the leash and I get that close to you, he has a problem. When he's away from you and I get that close to you, he has no problem, right? So he doesn't feel that tension or that, uh, okay, I, you know, it's like, a, it's like a big brother protecting their younger sister. They just, they have to do it. They feel obligated. And when really, if your sister was a badass and you know, it was like, I got my own, you're like, that's your problem. Um, so we're gonna, you're gonna just call him right to you. And he's more than likely gonna just walk right past me to get to you. And then again, I don't wanna push him, but I know that if then when he got to you and I put pressure on you, um, he would react. But what I want you to do is when you call him, I want you to walk closer to me just a little bit and uh, we'll see how he does. So go ahead and call. Yeah. He's such a baby. Good. So just, yeah, foos him uh, this way. Good. And then just stop. So like, see, and I wanna, I wanna show you something. I'm gonna show you something in a second. 
So see how he's, he's now like, so part of me thinks this, is he's like, this guy is making us work. So part of me thinks that he's, he's, he's being, because I get this type of scenario with dogs who don't work a lot, okay. where they also were like, can we just go lay down now? So go ahead, go ahead and place. Okay, call him to you. Go away. Wait, 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 wait. Before you leave, don't forget, cop yourself some No Bad Dog Burge at buynobaddogs.com. <clears throat> okay, good. Now we're just gonna do some studying on uh, your relationship on the leash outside. Yeah, what kind of snakes are around here? Just everything? Yeah, I, I, hear, his, I hear it. So this is a house that uh, Axel supposedly <laughs> Uh, reacts to every single time. Mm. 